Okay. Hey guys, it's Nathan, and I'm I'm back, and I'm here here to do another reaction video. And this video I'm going to be watching is top top fifteen ritual creepy pastas. Yeah, my last two video videos I use I do those those because because I always have an interest in them. And this is my third one. So, okay, let's start. In association with Psychodump. Yep, Psychodump. Pretty cool. Yep, you know the drill with these warnings. This video contains disturbing content, violent content, jump scares, and sudden loud noises. Thank Viewer you. discretion advised. <laughs> In the dark. Damn. Ritual creepypastas have some of the deepest roots in urban legends and haunted histories that wind around tales handed down as far back as the Edo era of Japan. Hmm. Although not all have their origins there, mm -hmm. many spawn from ancient tales of demons, devils, ghosts, and spirits woven by mystics of the Orient. Tonight, we will run a fine tooth loom through these rich texts and dissect their gruesome origins into steps that can lead only the most fate tempted few into the macabre arts of ritual creepypastas. Yeah, and trust me, there's gonna be some survival tips in, in some of those. So if you already know, just be aware. If you don't know, just watch. Number 15. The Dark Reflection Ritual Legends about mirrors have been around for hundreds of years. In particular, some ancient civilizations believed that there was a sort of purifying effect to mirrors. Huh. They believed that by looking your reflection in the eyes, it would transfer a person's negative energy into the reflection in the mirror. They believed that this had a cleansing effect but also hidden dangers. That's why breaking a mirror has been known to cause bad luck. For this ritual to work, you will need a mirror that you don't mind breaking. According to the manifesto, both the risk and the eventual reward for this ritual are stronger depending on how old the mirror is. The ritual needs to be started after sunset with at least six hours until dawn. Breathe on the mirror. By breathing on the mirror, you are symbolically linking yourself to the mirror and to the negative energy contained inside. This linking is critical to the success of the ritual. Use the candle to burn the mirror. This agitates the negative energy inside. You only need to do this for a few seconds or until there is a noticeable black mark on the mirror. Hmm, okay. The final part is breaking the mirror and running. Now, normally when a person breaks a mirror, they would be followed by bad luck. That's true. But this is a common misconception. Hmm. When a mirror is broken, the bad energy stays in one spot, near the broken mirror, until it eventually disappears. Bad luck will follow you throughout the night. At first, it will start out as small incidents, but then these incidents will begin to escalate into increasingly horrific things. Eventually, these incidents will become life-threatening. Yeah, the bad fun. luck will chase you throughout the night. Mm -hmm. But if you manage to survive until dawn, not only will you find that your bad luck has ended, mm -hmm. but a new streak of good luck is about to begin. Mm -hmm. The negative energy inside the mirror will be purified and will re-enter your body filling you to the brim with positive energy. It's noted that the positive energy will only last a few days from new mirrors. However, with older mirrors, the positive energy could last months, possibly years. Yeah. Number 14. The Holders. Yeah, which is covered before. The Holders is a special ritual pasta, one that offers a unique object of power. One that you can consider being a blessing or a curse, depending on how you view it. Each object that the holders seek has a different spin, a different task, and a different danger for the seekers to face. Awe, 
538 objects have a twist to them and usually involve death for those who seek. But there's one that is well known, at least one recurring scenario that happens quite frequently. And here's how it goes. Go to any insane asylum Anyone. or halfway house and Anyone. ask a specific question. Mm -hmm. Once done, depending on the response from the worker there, you may have found what you're looking for, or you may not. Now, the objects are picky for whom it wants to present itself to. There are special ones that involve performing a task like going into an old house, or other tedious tasks, but in the end, you will encounter a trial no matter what object you're going for. So what are the objects, and why do people want them? Well. The powerful objects we're talking about are items such as a cell phone that can kill people with just a single text. Damn. Or, say, a spoon that can predict the deaths of loved ones and possibly even prevent them. Maybe. Either way, the holders are people who seek objects of power, and in the end, whether you seek for a union, separation, or power, mm -hmm. I can without a doubt say, death is most likely in your future. Yeah, most likely. You're right. Number 13. The Raven Man Ritual. This is important. The Raven Man has been described as a creature that looks like a man with large wings for arms and is completely covered in feathers and has white eyes. It is said that if you can summon him and talk to him, he will grant your request and answer truthfully. What you'll need to summon him is as follows. Five candles, salt, a needle of some sort, and a protection symbol, so a talisman or cross should do. It's also important to keep it on you for the entire ritual. Create a circle of salt. This is for protection, as it's a place where the raven man cannot tread. Line up the candles before, and as you read each line, it's important to light one candle with each passing line. The incantation goes, On this dark night, I call on the raven man. Appear before me, here and now, and do my will. Now take the needle and pierce your skin, so you can get a drop of your blood. Touch the last candle, and say, The flame is my beacon. The blood is my sacrifice. Okay. You may catch a glimpse of the Raven Man, but will most likely simply feel his presence. You can ask him whatever question you may want, and he will answer you truthfully. No one has ever asked more than three questions. The Raven Man appears to know the answer to every single question he is asked, but he may choose to answer in very vague, enigmatic ways. Each answer he has given has been reported as correct, cool. with the exception of a single one. Yeah, cool. It is important never to threaten or mock the Raven Man, nah. for he will see this as an insult and take you to purgatory. <laughs> Once you are done with your ritual, it is your turn to release him. Thank him for coming to see you and answering your requests, and put the candles out, one by one. But do not blow out the candles. Instead, Ooh. snuff them out with your fingers. Keep the talisman or protection symbol with you while you sleep. Yeah, if... Number 12. Number 12. Protection Ritual Against Ubume. Interesting. Obume is a Japanese yukai believed to originate from the Edo era of Japan and is listed in author Hukasai's Hyaku Monogatari, which translated means the Tome of a Hundred Monster Stories. Descriptions of Obume encapsulate an overwrought mother thought to have perished in the pains of birth. Wow. Her child having died before the birthing process was ever complete, but never passed into the world outside of the womb. This left Ubume Bume in a state of restless limbo, where she longed to hold her newborn, dead or alive, to her bosom as mothers are so inclined to do. Alas, this unfulfilled ache in her restless spirit drove her rotting semblance back to haunt the delivery rooms of many hospitals. Black rings or patches of rot in hospital ceiling tiles mark her presence, and her eagerness to strike when the child reaches its final trimester. And so in Japan, when a mother births her baby, she is instantly given the wailing newborn to hold close as Ibume knows a mother's will and grasp is too strong to let their new child be taken from them. But unbeknownst to most, when a mother dies in birth, or both mother and fetus die, 
the newborn is still placed in the arms of the mother's corpse. Even if an all-out vivisection needs to be performed, this seals the protection ritual that will stop Uvume from ripping the child from the belly of the dead mother, whether it be living or having passed like a jealous Uvume. Christ. Number 11. Topa. While not a ritual pasta on its own, this creepy pasta has its roots buried deep within a very real, very scary, and very spiritual ritual. Topas are visual representations of yourself, in which you can use to access your own subconscious. While many monks can do this ritual, if you're weak-minded, weak-willed, or just overall unfit to be doing this, your most animalistic desires and needs will take control over you. Topa's an imaginary being created in your mind that will talk, react to you, and, well, you will react to it, both physically and mentally. Also, studies show that topas have been reported to be most common amongst children, rather than adults. Subconscious actions will also become conscious, dark recesses of your minds will become vocal, and finally, you will become your subconscious, while your mind takes over. <laughs> Yes, it goes without saying that this is very dangerous and requires deep thought and concentration in order for this to be achieved. But, <laughs> as you all may know, not everything goes according to plan and I can guarantee you, if you haven't been practicing or studying most of your life, this won't. Yeah. Number 10. And one Topa says all thoughts are creative. The Elevator Ritual. The Elevator Ritual is a creepy paranormal game originating in Japan and Korea. The main goal of this ritual is a common theme seen in many creepypasta rituals, and that is to enter a parallel dimension via a man-made machinery. The steps are simple and as follows. You must get into an elevator alone. Enter the following floors in order. 4th floor, 2nd floor, 6th floor, 2nd floor, and the 10th floor. If someone else gets in while you are doing it, the ritual will not work. It won't work. When you arrive at the 10th floor, press the 5th floor button again without getting out. When you arrive at the 5th floor, a young woman will get in and join you in the elevator. Do not speak to her. Or acknowledge her existence. After the woman gets in, press the 1st floor button. After you press the 1st floor button, the elevator will take you up to the 10th floor, instead of taking you down to the 1st floor. If you press any other floor's button at this point, the ritual won't work. When your elevator has gone past the 9th floor, you can take it as a sign that your ritual is now complete. There is only one way of checking that the ritual has been successful. This new area will only have one person in it. You. What this black and white parallel dimension is exactly, is a vague theory at best. Some say it's an ethereal plane, only where the corporeal may enter, but will be unable to lay mortal eyes upon the tortured souls trapped in this limbo. The neon cross in the distance is believed to be little more than a metaphorical carrot on a stick meant to lead the foolish from their entrance point in hopes that they will not find their way back to their normal realm. It's reported that the longer you spend in the realm, the closer the noises will come, and many versions of this game state that after a certain point, it's no longer possible to return to the present. The ritual does not always work. It's believed that there are certain conditions which need to be in place, but no one knows for sure what they are. The elevator ritual has also been reported by LA police who witnessed the disappearance of a woman on CCTV who was seen pushing elevator buttons in a strange order and simply vanishing after an hour with no trace. Yeah, and that was Elisa Lamb. And and to get back, you had to do the steps you did in the first place. Because other, otherwise, you're fucked. Got it? Well, good. And now on number nine. The Three Kings Ritual The Three Kings Ritual is an ability to enter a parallel plane called the Shadow Side. 
It's been rumored that this plane reflects what mood you are in, so the ritual must be performed when the participant is at peace of mind. The ritual must be performed in an empty and quiet room. If the room has windows, they must be covered to make sure no light can enter it. Other materials will include a candle, a mug of water, a fan, two large mirrors, three chairs, an alarm clock, a cell phone, a friend who will help you follow the rules, and lastly, a small toy or object from your childhood. Now, place one chair in the center of the room, facing north. Place the two other chairs exactly to the left and right, facing your throne. One would be the queen's seat, the other is the fool's seat. Place the two large mirrors on the queen and fool chairs left and right of you, facing you. Try your best to have them stand at a 90 degree angle. If you sit down on your throne, facing straight ahead, you should be able to perceive your own reflection in each of the two mirrors without actually having to turn your head. Place the bucket of water and the mug in front of you, just barely out of reach. Place the fan behind you. Turn it onto the medium or low setting. Turn off the lights, leave the door open, and go to your bedroom. Set the candles by the side of the bed next to a lighter, your alarm clock, and your cell phone. Set your alarm clock for 3.30 a.m. and sleep while holding your power object. Once the alarm wakes you up at 3.30 a.m., turn it off, but don't turn on the light. You have exactly three minutes to light your candle, grab your cell phone and power toy, and make your way to that dark room to sit on your throne. You should be seated by 3.33 a.m. Now, before we proceed, this is very important. If your cell phone isn't working, abort the ritual. If the alarm didn't go off exactly at 3.30 a.m., abort the ritual. If you find the dark room closed and remember you left it open, abort the ritual. If the fan is turned off, abort the ritual. If all is going as planned, place the cell phone in your pocket, walk into the room with the candle and power toy, and sit upon your throne. Do not look directly at either of the two mirrors beside you. Do not let the candle go out. The fan is behind you, and you must protect the candle with your body. Look straight ahead at the darkness without looking at either the candle or the mirrors. Mm -hmm. Gaining access to the shadow side can be a lengthy process, as people have reported the procedure to not work or else catch a glimpse of it. While your friend will not be participating with you in the ritual, they will be on hand in case anything drastic happens to you. Mm -hmm. These will include calling your cell phone or throwing a mug of water to draw you back to the normal world. The toy is used to feel the presence of the normal world if the user's sight is somehow impaired by the vision. That's right. Number 8. Macbeth. Yeah, Shakespeare. Macbeth is a protection ritual for those who are either ignorant enough to commit a certain act, or those who are interested in tempting fate for the worst. Macbeth originates from Shakespeare's play of the same name. Apparently, he wrote the play and named it after a word closely associated with a coven of witches. The story goes that these witches cursed the word, and if you use it in a theater, it will cause your own death or very bad misfortune. Eesh. Now this is where the ritual comes in. Next time you're in the theater, stand in the empty foyer, place your hands by your side, and look down and close your eyes. Under your breath, say the word Macbeth. You require maximum concentration. A minute or so will pass and your senses will become numb. You will feel a very cold chill and three beings will surround you. Do not open your eyes or you will surely die of a heart attack. For you are now surrounded by the ghosts of the three witches. With your eyes still closed, look up and speak the words 
angels and ministers of grace, defend us, which is a line from Shakespeare's Hamlet contained in Act 1, Scene 4. Now stand and wait. You'll feel your skin begin to crawl, but yet it will remain perfectly still. After a minute or so, a wall of ice-cold wind will hit you, and once this has happened, open your eyes once more. Spin around three times, and then spit over your left shoulder. Yep, enough. You have been cleansed of the curse at this point, and for your participation, the witches have granted you eternal fortune. Now leave the theater, and never return, or you are doomed to suffer a truly horrible ending. Then don't come back. Number 7 The Black Foam Ritual Far more complicated and strict in its details to attention, mm -hmm. the Black Phone Ritual almost comes across as a snare for the foolhardy or a puzzle box for the challenge hungry. Nonetheless, theorists have suggested that both the elevator and Black Phone Rituals could be tied together in the sense that it is believed they land you in the same ethereal dimension. Mm -hmm. What you'll need is a black rotary phone, paper and writing materials, two black cords measuring more than 40 centimeters, and a watch. Turn off all the lights in the house, shut all the curtains in every room, remove any salt that is located in the room with the rotary phone. When you're ready, tie one of the black cords to the handset of the phone very tightly so it doesn't come undone. Hold the handset a distance away and dial 2040-06080. Place the handset back on the rest. Lift the handset again, and this time, dial 255-15823, but leave the handset lying down. Walk into another room and close the door to the room with the rotary phone. Wait in the room for one minute by checking your watch. Enter back into the room with the rotary phone and place the handset on its rest. Dial the same number, leave the handset lying down, and walk to the third empty room in the house. Close the door and wait in there for another minute. Leave the room after the minute and enter the room with the rotary phone again. Place the handset back to its state, but don't pick it up. Dial 22822. Leave the phone and enter the fourth nearest room of the house. This time shut your eyes and close the door. Feel for the doorknob and tie the second black cord into a double H shaped knot. Hmm. Wait several minutes and open your eyes. Don't utter a single word, but draw back the curtains. And if the windows have turned all black, the ritual has worked. To end the ritual, find an eight digit number lying around the room. Write it on a piece of paper. Grab the doorknob with the cord, close your eyes, and repeat that number over and over again in your head. If you feel that someone is speaking to you or trying to grab you, ignore it and concentrate on the number in your mind. Check to see if the windows in the room are still black. If they haven't changed, it means the ritual hasn't been ended. If you have been successful, it is important to burn the eight-digit number. Otherwise, you are prone to having strange experiences and calls from unknown people. Yeah, and it's no surprise that no one uses rotary phones anymore. Or, and no one doing this. So yeah. Yep, it can be important too. Number 6. The Bath Game. Sounds weird. The Bath Game, or Daruma, is a paranormal ghost game that originated in Japan. The game involves summoning a grotesque ghost that follows you all day. The object of the game is to evade the ghost and prevent it from catching you. The ritual is as follows. Before you go to bed at night, take off your clothes and go into the bathroom. Fill the bathtub with water and turn off all the lights. Sit in the middle of the bathtub, facing the faucet or taps. Wash your hair while repeating over and over the words, Daruma-san fell down. Daruma-san fell down. As you wash your hair in your mind, you should see an image of a Japanese woman standing in the bathtub. She slips and falls onto a rusty tap. Damn. The tap goes through her eye and kills her. 
Keep repeating the words, Daruma-san fell down, Daruma-san fell down, until you finish washing your hair. Your eyes must remain shut. You may hear or feel a slight movement in the bathtub behind you. Keep your eyes closed. Do not peek. Do not open. You have just summoned a ghost. The ghostly figure of a woman will rise out of the water behind you. You will feel her presence as she stares at you, her head just behind your right shoulder. Her hair is black and tangled. Her clothes are tattered and rotting. She only has one eye. Her left eye is wide open and bloodshot. Her right eye is missing, leaving just a bloody hollow eye socket. When you sense the presence of the ghost, say out loud, Why did you fall in the bath? Keeping your eyes shut tightly, stand up, get out of the bath. Be careful not to trip and fall. Immediately leave the bathroom and shut the door behind you. Now it is safe to open your eyes. Leave the water in the bath overnight and go to sleep. Hmm. The next morning, when you wake up, the game will begin. The ghost of the one-eyed woman will be following you. Whenever you turn and look, she will disappear. Throughout the day, when you glance over your right shoulder, you'll occasionally catch a glimpse of her. She will get closer and closer as the day goes on. Do not allow her to catch you. If you glance over your shoulder and you see that she's way too close, you should shout, De she, which means stop. <laughs> then run away as quickly as possible. This will allow you to put some distance between yourself and the one-eyed woman. To end the game, you must catch a glimpse of the ghost woman and shout, Kita, which means I cut you loose. Then hold out your hand in front of you and swing it down in a cutting motion. Hmm. Number five. Bloody Mary. Yep, you sure know this one. In folklore and children's street culture, Bloody mm -hmm. Mary is a game in which a ghost of the same name is set to appear in a mirror when summoned. One of the more common ways a participant can attempt to make her appear is to stand before a mirror in the dark and repeat her name three times. Though, there are many variations, and some include chanting a name at a specific time, running of the water, spinning around, or chanting with a lit candle. Bloody Mary, well, the real Bloody Mary, would essentially use her noble powers to get virgin girls from local towns to be her servants. Now, once they are there, oftentimes they are stripped, tortured, and drained of blood, so she could bathe in an attempt to remain young and youthful forever. Crazy. Hence the name, Bloody Mary. That's right. Go into your bathroom, alone, late at night, and then look into a mirror and say Bloody Mary three times. Turn off and repeat Bloody Mary another three times, and turn on the lights. If the plan goes horribly, the ghost Bloody Mary will appear behind you, and <laughs> you're all horror junkie types. I'm pretty sure you can guess what happens from that point on. Understand, this ritual has many variants, and many variations, because it's changed over the years and times. So. If you heard it in a different way, it's because you probably did. Yeah, the debatable thing is that they're still doing it to this day. Or probably not. Who knows? Yeah, which is crazy. Number four. The Protection Ritual of Kuchisake Ana. I saw that movie once. Kuchisake Ana, which translates literally to the Split Mouth Woman, is a Toshin Densetsu, or in English, an urban legend that recounts the horrific tale of a woman who stole the heart of her rival's love, who in turn faced her down in a dark alley one night, and in a mad rage, mutilated her face by ripping her mouth ear to ear. The split-mouthed woman was driven mad by the fact that she was once beautiful and that she now wears a med mask at all hours. When she spotted beautiful children, she envied them, and it was said that she would ask, What does she Do you think I am beautiful? Respectfully, most would just nod or approve of what little of her face they could see. Kuchisake Ona would then remove her mask, allowing her jaw to flop open hideously. Mm. She would then ask the same question, and if the victim answered yes, then they would have to suffer through their own mouth being slashed open in the same manner. And if they answered no, then they would simply be killed on the spot. 
This urban legend grew so strong in the early 1990s era of Japan that school children were asked to be walked home by teachers. Prevention of Kuchisake's attack is said to work as follows. When approached by her, she will ask the victim, Do you think I am beautiful? A response of yes will cause her to drop the mask and show her mouth. She will ask that same question again. Answering yes will cause Kuchisake to carve a slash in the victim's mouth similar to hers. And answering no will cause Kuchisake to kill the victim right on the spot. Mm -hmm. Victims have apparently thought of an ambiguous answer of, I don't know, or by throwing candy at Kuchisake, causing confusion, and it distracts her long enough to escape. And the moral of that is respect your spirits. Anyway, number three. The Devil's Game. The Devil's Game is an incredibly dangerous game that some say is rather difficult to pull off or even make work. The Devil is a rather odd supernatural being, rooted in many different religions and occult rituals. The Devil's Game is one ritual on how to contact him. The ritual explains that by entering a church at 11.30pm, you'll need a wall-sized mirror, red string, red or white candles, and salt. Once you have the mirror in place, wrap the string around it and tie it together. This is to bind the spirit and simply protect yourself from him so he won't get out. Place the candles evenly apart. Now they need to be red or white because those symbolize purity and protection. As you can tell, most of this is for your own protection, and most of this protection is usually based on belief, so you may want to experiment if you wish. Now, put a circle or half circle of salt around the mirror. Finally, you'll need to sit down and simply pray or believe the devil to be present. Keep in mind, this part of the ritual must be done between the time of midnight and quarter past. It's been rumored he will show up. However, he's more likely to appear on days such as Friday the 13th, Halloween, or simply a day that has a dark psychological effect. This is again a belief-based system. If all goes according to plan, he will be looking at you through the mirror. It is of vital importance to never look into his eyes, but rather keep your eyes focused on his face, as looking directly into his eyes will cause him to suddenly appear outside the mirror in this realm. Now, the devil game is played between you and the devil. One will ask the question, and the other will answer. You will need to answer what question he asks, truthfully and honestly, and he will be forced to do the same. But remember, the devil's game can go horribly wrong, and can be incredibly unpredictable. Should you decide to stumble on a question or take too long to answer? Yeah, I don't go to church because I heard the stories a hundred times. Number two. Almost there, guys. The Midnight Game. Yep, we know this. The Midnight Game is an old pagan ritual used mainly as punishment for those who have broken the laws of the pagan religion in question. While it was mainly used as a scare tactic, not to disobey the gods, there is still a chance of death to those who attempt to play the midnight game. That's right. So let's begin the actual ritual. It must be exactly midnight when you begin performing the ritual. Otherwise, it won't work. You'll need a candle, a piece of paper, a writing implement, matches, salt, a wooden door, and at least one drop of your own blood. Mm -hmm. If you are playing with multiple people, they will need their own aforementioned materials, and they will have to perform the following steps. Write your full name, first, middle, and last on the piece of paper, but at least one drop of blood on the paper. Allow it to soak into it. Next, turn off all the lights in the place you're doing this. Go to your wooden door and place the paper with your name on it in front of the door. Knock on the door 22 times. The hour must be midnight upon the final knock. The door may open by itself. The entity you have just summoned is called the Midnight Man. This is where the game begins. 
you must now look around your own completely dark house with the lit candle in your hand. Your goal is to avoid the midnight man at all costs until 3.33 a.m. Should your candle ever go out, that means the midnight man is near you. You must relight your candle immediately. If you're not successful in doing this, you must immediately surround yourself with a circle of salt. Mm -hmm. If you are unsuccessful in both of your actions, the Midnight Man will create a hallucination of your greatest fear and kill you. Jeez. If you are successful in creating the Circle of Salt, you must remain there until 3.33 a.m. Afterwards, the Midnight Man will disappear. If you are successful in relaying your candle, you may proceed with the game. To win the game, you must avoid being captured by the Midnight Man until 3.33 a.m. The Midnight Man will leave your house afterwards, and you will be able to proceed with your morning. Yep, and you'll forget what happened. And finally, number one. How to play Hide and Go Seek alone. Mm -hmm. Hide and Go Seek Alone is a famous game in Japan and Korea. Originating from Japan where you let a spirit possess a doll and play a game of hide and go seek with it. Essentially, it's a form of necromancy and it goes without saying that it's very dangerous, but I highly doubt that any of you are going to listen to me so why don't we start off with what you'll need. Mm -hmm. A stuffed doll with limbs. It's recommended to use a human doll as there's a huge chance that the spirit will not leave it. If you have an animal doll with limbs, it can be used as well. Rice. Now, rice is said to, well, attract spirits, and <laughs> it's supposed to be more attractive and that usually would reside in your doll. Something from your body. Now, usually fingernails for the doll to represent you. This means if you do something to the doll, the same thing will happen to yourself. Never use someone else's body parts. This will result in the doll replacing that person instead of, well, the doll. And the mm -hmm. game will not work correctly. A sharp edged object to anger the spirit within the doll, usually by stabbing it. Mm -hmm. Now be sure not to use a knife or scissors as the doll will potentially stab you with it after it finds you. Use a pencil or small needle instead. It's recommended that you use a wooden toothpick. Red thread to soap the hole you made with the doll. This letter symbolizes blood vessels and acts as a restraint later in the game. Salt water or salt. Now, this will be used later in the game to get rid of the spirit inside the doll. A bathtub with water. If your home does not have a bathtub, a basin large enough to put the doll in <laughs> with water in a bathroom works too. A very safe sanctuary or hiding spot. When it's the doll's turn to find you, if you have a room with statues and things related to your religion, it's recommended you make that your hiding spot. You must turn off all lights and leave the television on, well, static. Mm -hmm. Head to your hiding spot and then count to 10 and return to the bathroom with your sharp edged object. After stabbing the doll, declare that the object is it again and then return to your hiding spot. Where they are able to sip half a cup of salt water without swallowing. Now, after counting to 10, they must find you. The television static is said to flicker on and off with the dolls near you. If it has moved, if it has found you, spit the salt water on, then pour the leftover contents of the cup, ending the ritual. It is of vital importance that the doll is dried, burned, and stuffed with salt afterwards, or the demon or spirit may have not have completely left it. Well, she's in deep shit, and yeah, fucked. And that is top 15 ritual creepypastas with my reaction of it. Well, in conclusion, all I had to say, this is like, like some very important information by the, by those guys listed. listed and, and you gotta learn to respect your spirit, learn to respect the spirits and like, I follow all the rules that it that has been given. Otherwise, you're f you're fucked. But yep, you're gonna, gonna be in deep shit. And, and don't do what it says. As as and and all I can say is, 
is thank you tats uh, videos for giving me like uh, something more to talk about with the with these urban legends or anything to do with video games and whatever ever anyway leave a like if you enjoy or the video sub subscribe for more and uh, as always i'll be seeing you in the next video